Welcome to another video. Looking at this problem, the first time I said I would just square the right hand side, multiply everything by this denominator that's going to show up, and get a giant polynomial of degree 4. I know it's going to be the fourth degree polynomial because this is going to become x squared somehow after squaring it and then if I multiply it by this side it's going to become x squared times x squared so you have a fourth degree polynomial and I know I'm supposed to get four answers now whether the four answers are going to be distinct answers or I'm just going to get maybe one of them will be twice or two of them will just be doubled have multiplicities of two well I didn't care but I just knew I would get a giant polynomial but when I started solving it I found another way. It was a more magical way and that's the way I want to take you. Let's get into the video. The first thing I'm going to do is um, move this guy here so that the X family are on the same side. So. I have 8 minus x squared uh, equals, rather, I move this over and then I have plus. If I distribute this, it's going to be x squared over, this is x minus 1 squared. Nice. If I give these two a common denominator, I'm going to end up with x squared times this, x minus 1 squared plus x squared divided by x minus 1 squared. Okay, so because I know the strategy I want to take, otherwise I would just have multiplied both sides by x minus 1 squared and this will have, this h2 will have x minus 1 squared, but I don't want to give it any x minus 1 squared. So what I'm going to do it now is distribute this. This is going to be equal to the sum of two squares is not interesting. It's the difference that's interesting. So this is going to be x squared times, if I distribute this, it's going to be x squared minus 2x plus 1 plus x squared over x minus 1 squared. You would ask me a question, why wouldn't you just multiply and get a long polynomial? You're going to get a fourth degree polynomial that is difficult to factor unless you now start applying the rational roots theorem and the remainder theorem, doing synthetic division multiple times before you get it. Unless you're lucky, okay, you get it. So it's not that you can't do this another way, it's just that this way is just beautiful. Now, see what, what's going to happen. If we distribute this x squared into this, we're going to end up with, we're going to say that 8, we still have 8 on the outside, is equal to, this is x to the fourth. What do we have here? We have minus 2x cubed. You see that? And what do we have here? Plus x squared plus x squared. Nice divided by x minus 1 squared. Okay, at this point I see something that I hope you see. I see that if I split this in the middle, let's split this, x to the fourth, I'm going to split it and put x minus 1 squared here. And I take everything that is left, I'm going to take it to the other side, this is going to be minus this is going to be 2x cubed plus 2x squared. The same denominator, x minus 1 squared. Okay, watch what's going to happen. This I can write as x squared over x minus 1 squared. And when I go here, this can be factored. What is common to both? 2x squared. I can take out 2x squared. Watch this. 2x squared. And what will be left? It's going to be x 
minus 1 divided by x minus 1 squared. This x minus 1 will take out one of these x minus 1s and see what happens at the end. You have 8 is equal to x squared over x minus 1 squared minus what is down here? It's just going to be 2 times x squared over x minus 1 equals 8. And I say, let's just do some magic, magic here. I just say let x squared over x minus 1 be equal to y. If I move this 8 to this side, it becomes minus 8, everything will be equal to 0. So I can write a quadratic equation in terms of y and write this as y squared minus 2y minus 8 is equal to 0. That is beautiful. Okay, so once you get this, this can be factored. Okay, so let's finish this. Okay, it took a while because I was trying to make you see all the steps you're going to take. But now we have y squared minus 2y minus 8 equals 0. This is definitely y. If we factor this, let's factor it here. This is y minus 4, y plus 2 equals 0. We found two values of y that we're going to say. So we have y is equal to 4 or y is equal to negative 2. Those are the solutions to this quadratic equation. And now we can go back here and easily solve for a y. Okay, so we can go here and say that x squared over x minus 1 um, is equal to 4. And what does this mean? If we cross multiply, we have x squared and we put everything together. It's going to be x squared minus 4x plus 4 is equal to 0. What does this tell you? If you factor this, this is a perfect square. This is x minus 2 squared is equal to 0, which implies x is equal to 2, has a multiplicity of 2. We have two answers, x equals 2 and x equals 2 because of this case, right? Okay. So that's the first set of answers. We've gotten two of the answers. We just need to use negative 2 for the second equation. Okay, so for the second equation, all we have to do is say x um, squared over x minus 1 equals negative 2. If you convert this into a quadratic equation, you notice that this will multiply this, it becomes negative 2x. If you bring it back here, it becomes plus 2x. This will multiply this, it becomes positive 2. If you bring it back, it becomes um, negative 2. So what we actually have is x squared. Um, plus 2x minus 2 is equal to 0. If you use the quadratic formula for this, or you do completing the squares, you're going to see, let's just do completing the squares. How do we do completing the squares? You focus on these two, and what's half of 2? It's going to be 1. So you end up with this. You're going to end up with x plus 1 squared is going to be equal to this moved over 3. Actually, that's what you're going to get. That's completing the squares. <laughs> okay. I have a lot of videos that address some of these things. Okay, but I just wanted to show you this strategy. This was the focus of this video. Okay, what do we have here? We have then that x plus 1 will be equal to plus or minus square root of 3, so that our x will be equal to minus 1, plus square root of 3, this would be our x2, let's, no, x3 actually, the third answer, so um, this was x1 and 2, so these are both 1 and 2, those are the two answers we've gotten, this is x3, and then x4 will be minus 1 minus the square root of 3. Ah, let me box all the answers. and box this one too. Multiplicity 
of two. I hope this was fun. Never stop learning. Those who stop learning, stop living. Bye-bye.